Now then, it's time for uh, a la carte. I'll look at uh, what else is on the menu, if you like, here at France 24. And I guess uh, today is our reporter, James Andre, who's with us in the studio. Good to have you with us, James, as Good ever, morning. of course. You just uh, finished producing a report about space exploration for France 24's revisited programme with Sylvain Rousseau. He's uh, spent two weeks in Florida, Texas and Utah as well to film a documentary about uh, 50 years of the Apollo 11 mission to the moon. James, you brought the moon with you as well. Yes, you? I Which have. Which is quite you impressive. See, there we are. Yeah. The moon, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> it's a small one, but it this does, the moon. you know, it does yeah, give yeah. you light. So there you go. How significant then was uh, Apollo 11 and, of course, uh, first man on the moon? I mean, it's one of those events which really does go down in history in most people's minds anyway, isn't it? Absolutely. It's one of these things where everybody remembers where they were when it actually happened, and that was on the 20th or 21st of July 1969. And obviously this is why we decided to do uh, this documentary. But you've got to realise that the Apollo programme, which led to uh, Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin actually walking on the moon, uh, was an incredibly huge project. And you can actually see that in these pictures here, because we visited the Kennedy Space Centre, which was designed and created back in the 60s, to, you know, to make Apollo possible. And in order to send men to the moon, well, uh, the NASA built the largest and most powerful rocket ever built. It was 110 meters high. And all this was uh, designed in order to make this possible. Now, just uh, everything starts back in 1961 when President Kennedy at the time gives a speech where he says, I want a man on the moon by the end of the decade. And what's incredible is to think that at that stage, all the Americans and the Russians, actually, because this was a race. The objective was to beat the Russians, uh, had done to, at that stage, was basically to send a man from the surface of the, of the Earth into lower Earth orbit. The idea of the moon was basically that there was a, this was a complete reset of the space race. And this is why the Americans decided to do it. Now, to do this documentary, uh, we met some of the people who were there at the time and who took part in this. Uh, so. We're going to play a little uh, piece of the film. Uh, in this piece, you will see Tom Moser, who was the chief engineer, uh, who was one of the chief engineers on Apollo, and then went on to become uh, one of the uh, lead engineers on the shuttle program. You will see Jack Lausma, he was an astronaut, and you will see Jerry Griffin, and he was the man who was a flight director for all of the Apollo uh, missions, actually. These are the guys who got the call, for example, during Apollo 13, when they said, Houston, we've had a problem. Here they are. And don't forget, when, when Kennedy said put a man on the moon, we'd never put a person in space. There was a lot of things that we didn't know, a lot of systems that had to be developed for communications, command and control, navigation. So it was all uh, a, a huge set of challenges. I think we were too young to know we couldn't do it, so we did it. On 11, uh, that was a very clean mission. We didn't have many anomalies, and the most exciting part of that mission was probably at about 80 feet, somewhere thereabout. He just threw it in, he said, picking up some dust. <laughs> and when he said that, the hair stood up on it. It's still since yeah. chills up my back, because I thought, my God, we got humans in the spacecraft blowing dust. Mm. So indeed, the Americans won that race, and it did change a lot of things. You know, obviously it was incredible to have a man on the moon in the first place, but it's the work of 400,000 people to get these men onto the moon. It cost, in today's dollars, the Apollo program, $234 billion. Wow. And basically what Neil Armstrong used to say about it, he said, you know, you had four things. You had, you needed public support, you needed funding, and back in the 60s, the US had a balanced budget. He said, you needed uh, the powerful leadership to want to do it, and you needed, you know, a threat, and the threat obviously mm. was the Russians. So he said, if we hadn't had all these four things at the same time, Apollo would have never happened, and if it hadn't been Apollo, it would probably been something else. But the legacy of all this is huge. You can cite GPS, satellite communication, satellite television. You can talk about the dustbusters, you know, on our tables. They were designed in the first place. They were a NASA invention to pick up dust on the moon. Legacy might be incredible, but actually, since then, no one's been back. I mean, but there are plans, aren't there? There are plans, absolutely. And uh, yeah, we went to uh, we went to NASA to ask them, well, why has not no one been for the last fifty years? So I'll let you listen to Jim Bridenstine. He is the NASA administrator right now. We got a chance to ask him a question. This is what he has to say. 
The reason we're not at the moon right now after 50 years is because of the whimsical budgets that come from Washington, D.C. So the president said, here's what we're going to do. We're going to go faster. And the vice president, by direction of the president, announced that we're going to land on the surface of the moon in 2024. What have we been doing for the last 50 years? Well, as Bob can tell you, as somebody who is um, part of the team that helped assemble the International Space Station and those kind of things, we've actually been very busy for the last 50 years learning how to live and work off the surface of the planet for a long time. And because of that, we actually have opportunities to now apply what we've learned on the International Space Station to the moon for a sustainable lunar return. Amazing. Exactly. Now, sustainable lunar return, what does that mean? Well, that means that basically what the Americans want to do this time is to go back. By 2024, the plan is they want a man and a woman, actually, the first woman, on the moon, on the actual surface of the moon. But then what they are going to create is they're going to create an orbital space station around the moon that is going to be called Gateway. Mm -hmm. And this will be a waypoint. Basically, they can send someone to Gateway and then from Gateway land any way they want on the moon. Wow. And what everybody's interested in right now is the South Pole, because uh -huh. the South Pole of the moon, uh, well, a, an Indian probe 10 years ago discovered that there is a very large quantity of ice on the South Pole of the moon, and that's been confirmed last year by NASA. And who says ice says water? Mm -hmm. That means potential drinking water. Mm -hmm. By 2028, they want to install an actual base on the moon. And with this water, well, you can actually uh, change it into oxygen and hydrogen, mm. which means rocket fuel, and potentially wow. go further. Wow, incredible. I mean, the uh, ultimate goal then, presumably, is to, to, to go further, as you say, perhaps Mars? Absolutely. Mars is the ultimate goal. Now, there is no schedule to get to Mars, but the idea is the Moon is a lot smaller than the Earth. You need a lot of power, hence Saturn V, the largest and most powerful rocket ever built to cover the 240,000 miles to the Moon. Well, if you're leaving from the Moon, you've got six times less gravity. If you have fuel on the Moon, well, that makes it a lot easier to fly a lot further. But then the big question is, uh, we know how to go to actual Mars. We've sent, you know, robots there, but mm. the question is uh, radiation. It's uh, all the... all you know, the actual threat to the human body. Uh, right now, we don't know how you can survive in space for that long. We don't know how you, your muscles and your bones will not, you know, degrade in impacenta uh, for a very long period of time. Because if you're going to Mars, you're talking two and a half years of a mission. Well, that's incredible, isn't it? Let's talk about the space race nowadays, um, James. Of course, in the 60s, as you said, it was very much between the USA uh, and the USSR. Um, these days, there are a lot more players, aren't there? There are a lot more players, and there are some new players as well. Some of them are actually quite surprising. Now, obviously, it's very difficult to get to the moon, and it's true that the moon is so significant because uh, it's, it's philosophically it's mm. such an important milestone. But indeed, we have the Indians who are planning to send a, a rover to the moon by the end of the year. Uh, the Israelis tried and failed very recently. That was uh, in April or May. Their uh, you know, lunar module crashed uh, on the surface of the moon, which was a great disappointment to them. Uh, we have, obviously, the Chinese, who, as you know, have sent uh, a, uh, a rover to the far side of the moon, creating, uh, indeed, a, a, a satellite to communicate with it. So that was something very strong. Now, we did ask the NASA what they thought of that, and they said, well, yes, but we went to the far side of Mars. So I guess uh, the Chinese are very good, but they are one planet short of what NASA can do right now. But indeed, yes, a lot of people want to go. And the Indians, for example, are becoming very, very good at this and very, very cheap. So we'll have to see who wins that actual race. But let's face it, my money is on the US. You're probably right, aren't you? Now, look, of course, I've got to be sceptical just for a moment, because, of course, some people say uh, that no one ever actually walked on the moon. It was all just a, a big studio filmed fake. James, what are those um, who actually worked on the project, the people you've been talking to, actually say to that? Well, it's, it's, it's amusing because they actually have a bit of a laugh when you ask them the question. Now, surprisingly, uh, uh, there's a bit of a laugh actually at the NASA itself. When we were at KSC, uh, one lady said, well, you know, we've been testing all the lunar rovers uh, back there in a place called the Stone Garden. Oh, and by the way, this is where the conspirationists say we filmed the famous moon landing. Uh -huh. Ha, 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 very funny. <laughs> anyway, uh, yeah, they, they say a lot of things. You know, some of them uh, say that, uh, for example, uh, Jerry Griffin that you saw earlier in that interview said, well, look, as you know, it's difficult to keep a secret when there are two people. Mm -hmm. Now, keeping a secret for 50 years <laughs> when there's 400,000 people involved, yeah. he says, well, 
it's easier to actually go to the moon, honestly, than mm. keep that kind of secret. Sure. And then there's another thing which is, I think, more interesting, is that preparing this and speaking to the people, uh, I did hear the one thing which I think is the most convincing you know, element is the fact that when the Americans did it and when Neil Armstrong walked on the moon, the Russians cabled them to congratulate them. Mm. And as you can imagine, uh, the whole world, anybody who had uh, a telescope would be watching at that specific moment to try and see the Americans mm. arrive on the moon. And as you know, the Russians had already sent a vehicle to the moon at that stage. So the fact of the, the, fact of the matter is they knew full well and that would have been such an incredible propaganda you know, tool to say that it hadn't happened, mm. but they didn't say it. They didn't bother. Finally, James, I mean, going to the moon and the space race in general, I mean, obviously it's incredibly expensive. What do people say to their argument that actually that money would be better spent elsewhere here on Earth? We've got our own problems here, haven't we? True. Now, Tom Moser, which you saw in that interview, the man with the red polo, was the chief engineer, he spent quite a lot, you know, quite a big part of his career convincing Congress that they needed to put money in the space you know, exploration program. So I asked him the question, I said, what did you use to tell them? He said, well, look, you know, <clears throat> uh, when we did it in the first place, now obviously the idea was to beat the Russians, but everything we took out of it, he said, you know, uh, GPS, satellite communications, etc." as I was saying earlier on. And he says, right, you know what, if we go to Mars, I don't know what we will invent. Mm -hmm. I can't tell you. Back then, we didn't know we would invent the GPS and satellite television and, you know, weather satellites, etc. And so he says, you know, if you're investing in a startup and they came up with that kind of return on investment, you probably would want to invest. And by the way, the money's not going to the moon, it's staying on Earth. Very nicely said. James, thank you very much. We could talk for hours. In fact, we just cancel the news in the next few minutes, but we probably ought not to. Jeannie will be very upset. James Andre, our reporter uh, who's reporting for Vizda, it's not on air for a couple of weeks, is it? 14th of July? 14th of right? July. 14th of July, the programme will be on for the first time. You'll find it online as well. That's revisited.